This morning we praise you because you are a God who saves. You have chosen to send your son into this world to be our savior, to be the sacrifice for our sins, for our rebellion, so that you could make us sons and daughters of God. And Father, today we celebrate your forgiveness, we celebrate your salvation, and we thank you for loving us. And today we simply uh, bow before you in our hearts, in our lives, we yield our minds, our spirits, our strength to you, and ask that we would hear your voice and you would teach us from your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Yeah, I'm going to invite you to take your Bibles or your Bible apps and... Turn to the book of Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1. If, uh, if you don't have a Bible or if your device doesn't have a Bible app on it, then uh, there are Bibles like this in the pews all around you. Feel free to grab one of those and use it. It's page 1026, if you're interested, that we're going to be on. Uh, and if you don't own a Bible and you want to read the Word of God, then please take one of these with you. We want you to have the Word of God and be able to use it in your life. Uh, We're kicking off a series today called The Journey of Christmas. And, uh, you know, I know everybody knows about the Christmas story. We all kind of have that that idea, that popular idea of what's included in the Christmas story because we all saw the Charlie Brown Christmas special growing up, (laughs) right? Where It's really cool because Linus quotes the the Christmas story, uh, the birth of Jesus out of Luke chapter 2. And and, uh, that's why it's my favorite, you know, Christmas special. But uh, but the thing is, we know bits and pieces of the Christmas story, uh, but we don't know the whole thing. Not, not most of us. Not, not most of the time. We don't pay attention to the whole thing. And so the next few weeks, we're going to be walking through the Gospel of Matthew. See, there's two Gospels with uh, the birth of Jesus uh, recorded. One is Matthew and one is Luke. And Luke is the story kind of from Mary's perspective. And Matthew is the, so- the story from Joseph's perspective. And, and they're both, uh, they include different parts of the story. So it's going to be kind of cool. Hopefully you will learn something and uh, you'll know more about the Christmas story and how it uh, fits with our lives because it is a powerful, powerful story. Hey, uh, decisions have consequences. Have you noticed that? You've, you've discovered that. You can't really escape that reality if you're paying attention. Decisions have consequences. My whole life, at least from the uh, time I turned 16, I have decided to drive faster than the posted speed limit. Okay? Just been once. I can blame it on how I'm wired. I can say all that kind of stuff. But basically, it boils down to it's a decision that I make. And because of that decision, I've had the privilege of attending driving school <laughs> so many times uh, that I'm really qualified to teach it uh, by now. Uh, it's like I should graduate with a degree or something. Uh, because decisions have consequences. Uh, until recently, I indulged religiously at the altars of haagen and Dreyer's ice cream. And, and uh, that's right. And, and, you know, and, and because of that, I bear the, the results right here. Uh, and uh, they've, they've, you know, rather persistent want to stay there. So uh, because decisions have consequences. And, and, and all kinds of decisions have all kinds of consequences. Who we marry, the jobs that we take, whether we go to school, enlist in the military, whether we drink too much or experiment with drugs, all of those decisions play out in our lives. We cannot escape the results or the consequences of those decisions. So today as we kick off the, the Journey of Christmas series, I want you to think about your decisions as we consider Joseph's decisions. Now, when I say think about your decisions, here's what I don't want you to do. I don't want you to think about all the stuff that you decided in the past that you wish you hadn't. Because all of us, uh, if we're honest, would go back and change a couple of decisions in our life, right? If we had do-overs, you know, we would, you know, we look back and go, hey, that one caused a lot of pain. I think I would do differently knowing what I know now. We can't go back and do that. And God doesn't want us to live in a place of regret, Okay, just for the record, we all blew it at some point, okay? And, and that's reality, but God redeems our brokenness. So I'm not talking about looking back and going, oh, I wish I hadn't done that and living in regret. Because what we're talking about is tomorrow and today. Because we have the ability, based on the decisions we make, to change the trajectory of our life. 
to, to live differently going forward. And so I want you to think about the decisions you're going to make today and tomorrow at, to, that will shape your life in light of the, the scriptural account of Joseph and the decisions that he had to make. Matthew chapter 1, beginning in verse 18, the birth of Jesus Christ. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife. For that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. Now, first, we see that Joseph decided to divorce Mary. He decided to get a divorce from his wife, whom he was betrothed to. Uh, Did you catch that in verse 19? And her husband, Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. Now, that's, here's the situation. Joseph and Mary were betrothed, which means they were legally committed to each other. And, and we don't have a corollary to betrothed in our world. You know, we get engaged, but people break engagements all the time, right? Uh, you know, it just happens, uh, you know, give me the ring back, maybe keep the ring, whatever. But, uh, but you're getting married, you're not getting married. That just happens in our day and age. In their day and age, it didn't. Not easily. Because once you were betrothed, you were committed in a legal relationship. And in fact, the text actually calls Joseph her husband, even though they had not celebrated the marriage yet and had not consummated the marriage yet. They were legally husband and wife, betrothed. And so Joseph discovers that his betrothed wife is pregnant. And he knows for a fact that he is not the father. What would you do? See, guys, what would you do? You're, you're in this room, and, and, uh, and you're sitting here. Think about the story. Think Because, hey, remember, we've read the story. We've heard this story over and over and over again. And all of our imagery is, oh, Joseph and Mary, and they're traveling to Bethlehem, and he's leading the donkey. There's no donkey mentioned in Scripture, by the way. Or, or you know, there they are. They're, that's a stable, and, and, you know, she's given birth, and it's all so sweet and nice. And, and it starts with this. Joseph finds out that his wife is pregnant, and he's not the daddy. Not a happy beginning. So what decision would you make? Joseph had options. He could have just married her and said, hey, you know what, I'll raise somebody else's kid and and do it that way. I'll be the martyr. He didn't do that. He he could have said, hey, you know what, you're an adulteress, and I'm going to drag you out in the street, and I'm going to invite the community to stone you to death because I will declare to everybody that you cheated on me, and and this is somebody else's baby, and we're going to kill you because that's a crime that you can be executed for. He didn't want to do that, so he decided to divorce Mary, to break the marriage, to say, I'm no longer going to be your husband. He chose to show mercy in doing that. He was an honorable man. He said, look, I don't want to shame you. I don't want to destroy you. I don't want to take revenge on you. But I'm not going to be the husband of an unfaithful wife. That was his perspective on Mary. And so Joseph decided to divorce Mary. And then Joseph decided to change his plan. He had to go to sleep sometime, right? I don't know about you, but when you're, when you're angry, when you're frustrated, when you feel betrayed, and you're ranting and you're raving, you can't sleep, right? Because you just, you can't rest. Well, at some point, exhaustion hit him, or, or just, because uh, he didn't have, you know, Ambien back then. Uh, or uh, <laughs> he just finally passed out. And when he did, God showed up. Not in some kind of fuzzy, psychedelic dream like you get after, you know, eating pizza too late at night. He, you know, this was with clarity, with 
uh, directives that he knew what to do. And, and we see this. An angel appeared to him in a dream. Verse 20. He says, But as he considered these things, divorcing Mary, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you will call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. He said, hey, Joseph, this is not what you think. Did you catch that? God said, Joseph, you're thinking that she was unfaithful to you. It's not what you think. A miracle has happened here that you cannot even conceive of or comprehend. Because it's never happened before in the history of mankind. It's never happened before. It's never happened since. This is a one time only. And so, Joseph, this is not what you think. The Holy Spirit did this. So you don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Trust me, God says. I've got a plan that is different from your plan. Jesus is the Messiah, the Savior, God with us. And, and hearing this, Joseph changed his plan. This might be the most significant decision in the Christmas story. Because Joseph's decision to change his plan legitimized the birth of Jesus Christ. Now you think about this. Joseph changing his plan, changing his mind, uh, reversing field, uh, allowed God to to bring Jesus into this world as a family, in a family. If Joseph had walked away, if Joseph had said, forget it, God, I'm not going to do what you want, imagine the consequences that would have happened. Significant decision in the Christmas journey. You see, all of us have plans, don't we? You got a plan. You got thoughts about how life ought to be. You know, maybe your plan is to work hard and be successful. Maybe your plan is to get rich or be famous. Maybe your plan is to lead a quiet life and have a nice, normal family. Maybe your plan is to make a difference and leave an impact on this world. Maybe your, your plan is just to retire, relax, and enjoy life. We've all got plans, don't we? You know what I've noticed about our plans? I, I ask people all the time, what are your plans? What are you thinking about? What are your dreams? What do you want to do? Yeah, no one ever says, hey, my plans involve pain, suffering, sorrow, and loss. Nobody plans to be a failure. Have you guys ever realized that? Have you ever thought about that? Your plans don't include that, do they? Is there anybody who goes, well, you know, I'm planning on being a success for a while and then fail. <laughs> That's what I'm planning on doing. No, we don't do that. A lot of times we know the stuff we're going to do is going to lead to failure or lead to loss or lead to sorrow, but we do, we do it anyway. Those aren't really our plans. Those are kind of like the, uh, you know, the mistakes. Our plans, we got these great plans, but guess what, folks? We live in a world of sin, and so pain and sorrow and loss and failure are going to be part of what happens to us in this world. That's why we need God, because God is the one who takes our brokenness and our failure and our stumbles and who redeems them, and who takes our mistakes and our failures and turns them into something beautiful and we can go, wow, God, your plan is better than my plan. See, that's a statement of faith right there. Your plan is better than my plan, and I'm going to trust you. Now, when you confess Jesus as Lord, in other words, if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, the Savior of the world, you believe that he died on the cross to pay for your sins and was raised from the dead, and you have made a commitment to follow Jesus with your life, when you made that commitment, you gave God the right to change your plans. Maybe you never thought about it that way, but that's what it boils down to. You said, Jesus, you're my Lord, you're my master. You can change my plans. And, and if you change my plans, I'm going to be okay with that. And, and this is where faith gets real. Yeah, I should say this is where faith gets real difficult. Most of us in this room are okay with Jesus taking care of heaven. Because we can't, right? Okay, God, I, I, I trust you with my eternity because I can't do anything for that. Uh, I'm, I'm, you take me to heaven when I die. You're forgiving me of my sins. I'm good. I'm re relying on you because we can't make it happen. But then we kind of think, or we don't really say it, but I'll take care of here. God, you take care of there. I'll take care of here. You, your plans for me in heaven are wonderful. I'll plan for my life in this world. And God says, no, thank you. I think I want to be in charge of heaven, and I want to be in charge of right now. 
I want to direct your steps now as well as in eternity. And I've got eternity taken care of, but I want to bless you today. And so God has the right to interrupt and rewrite our dreams. Are you okay with that? Are you willing to embrace that? Are you willing to say, God, I believe your plans for me are better than my plans for me? You see, like Joseph, each of us faces that decision. Are we going to let God change our plans? Are we going to be okay with God rewriting our dreams because his plans are better? Here, let's just look at Joseph for a minute. His plan is to have a nice, normal Jewish family, right? Mary's going to be my wife. I'm betrothed to her. We're going to grow old together. We're going to have a family together. It's all going to be nice. And then that pain, suffering, loss kind of entered into that because he found out Mary was pregnant. That's betrayal, isn't it? That's what he felt. And he goes, all right, change in plan. Now I'm going to divorce Mary quietly and try to do the whole have a nice normal Jewish family again without her in it. That, that, was, that was his plan, according to the Word of God, right? But God's plan was this. Joseph, I want you to be the stepfather to Messiah. I want you to raise my son. Wow. So which plan's better? Yeah, God's plan's better, isn't it? Yeah, it, 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 we see it in Joseph's life. Do we see it in our own lives? Well, let me tell you about me. See, my plan was uh, I came to Calvary as pastor in, in 1992. Little, little struggling Baptist church. And, uh, and, and so I came here, and my plan was to come and learn how to be a pastor here, you know, make a lot of mistakes, and, and stay for like three or four years, and then move on to a real church in a big city. <laughs> Just telling you what my plan was, Okay. You know, because, you know, I didn't imagine what God could do. And, and so that was my plan because I thought, hey, maybe one day I'll be a successful pastor of a church of like, you know, three or four hundred people. And uh, <laughs> see, my expectations, my plans, but God has better plans because, you know, I, I showed up here and he let me fall in love with this church and fall in love with this community. And, and now look, look what God is doing. He's letting me lead uh, a church that has an impact on thousands in this community. I get to impact our, our entire state Baptist convention, and we have missions all over the world where we're making a difference for Christ. I never saw that coming, and guess what? I'll tell you all day long, God's plans are better than my plans. What about you? What about your plans? And do you believe that God's plan is better than your plan? Even if you've blown it, even if you've acted in defiance, God will redeem if you'll follow him, if you'll let him change your plans. See, again, it doesn't matter the mistakes you've made in the past. It doesn't matter the stuff you're sitting here regretting right now. I don't care if it happened last night. You're at a point where you can decide, God, you can change my plans from this point forward, and I'm going to move forward into your future, not my future. And I'm going to embrace your plans, not my plans. And I'm going to let you bless me rather than me try to bless myself. So do you believe that God's plan is better for you? Because if you do, you'll let God change your plan. So Joseph decided to divorce Mary. And then he decided to change his plan. So he ended up deciding to obey God. He decided to obey God. Look at verses 24 and 25 again. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. Joseph decided to obey God. He did as the angel of the Lord commanded. Now, let me just point out again that a lot of us in this room know what God wants us to do. But it really doesn't matter if you know what God wants you to do if you don't do it. So we know the things that God wants us to do. The question is, are we deciding to obey God at that point of knowledge? See, Joseph was told in a dream, here's what I want you to do. And, and he can say, okay, God, I'll, I'll do that. But if he didn't change his plan to obey God and actually obey God, then it wouldn't have happened. He woke up, and then he stepped into obedience. 
And some of us today need to wake up and step into obedience because we know the right things to do. And we've been making excuses like, I can't do that, and I can't afford to do that, and, and there's no way that I'm qualified to do that, and, and, and I just don't want to give that up. And yet God is calling us to step into obedience. Understand, it was not easy for Joseph to obey God. There was a loss, a cost to his obedience. Think about this. He had decided to divorce Mary. So he had already told at least his family and some of his close friends, I'm not the daddy of that baby. Now, by Joseph taking Mary to be his wife, he, he causes everybody who knows him and who respects him to suddenly uh, rethink their respect. Because now they think, oh, Joseph is a spineless weasel who's going to marry an unfaithful woman uh, and raise somebody else's child. Or Joseph is a liar because he said he wasn't the dad, but in truth he was really just an immoral pig who couldn't wait for his wedding day. Yeah, so which do you want to be known as, the spineless weasel or the immoral pig? <laughs> hey, and, and you know, see, we can laugh about this, but, but guys... Uh, we care about our reputation, don't we? We got this thing called pride coursing through our veins. I know you ladies do too, but it, it manifests differently. But as guys, we got this pride going through, our, and, and we don't want to be known as either. We want to be known as the hero. We want to be the, the, the good guy. And in, in, in Scripture, Joseph is, but in that moment, he gave up his reputation to obey God. And everybody except Mary thought he was nuts and thought he was a weasel and spineless or else thought he was a liar and immoral because he chose to obey God. And because he decided to obey God, he became the stepfather of Messiah. He got to raise God's son. He got to be the one who taught the son of God what it means to be a man. Wow. Isn't that cool? What a trust. What an awesome responsibility. And his obedience, Joseph's obedience, was a pathway to God's plan to give us eternal life. Hear this again. Joseph's obedience, his decision to obey God, opened the door for God's salvation to come to you and me. He obeyed God, and the ripple effect of his decision to obey God is still happening in your life and in my life. Because he legitimized the Messiah's birth. He raised Jesus, taught him to be a man. He was an instrument in God's plan that affected me and you with salvation. That's cool. But you see, our decisions have consequences. And every one of us, and the decisions we make, we have no idea how the ripple effect is going to go out and change people's lives. Your act of obedience right now to God, you have no idea what kind of an impact that's going to have. Joseph had no idea what kind of an impact that was going to have. Uh, if you told him, he couldn't have conceived of it. And it's that way in our lives too. We need to understand that our obedience, our decision to obey has consequences that ripple through eternity. I want you to hear uh, one story. Uh, of how, what that looks like. Annette is part of our church family here at Calvary, and God has worked in her life in a lot of wonderful ways. She agreed to share her story real briefly this morning. So uh, watch this video and enjoy the story. Hi, my name is Annette. I'm a grateful follower of Jesus Christ. I am a single mom of three. I have Kaylee is nine. Aiden is four and a half, and Kennedy is one years old. In my life, I've learned that my decisions have consequences. I've made some very poor decisions. I married an addict and quickly became an addict myself, and then I hit rock bottom and tried to commit suicide. I've also made some really good decisions in my life. I got out of that relationship and I got clean. I um, accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior and I started Celebrate Recovery here at Calvary and I've been clean for just about four years now. A couple years ago I faced a very crucial decision um, right as I was ending my marriage uh, with my ex-husband. I found out I was pregnant. 
I was terrified beyond belief and I had decided to have an abortion and got in my car, drove out to pilot, pulled over and called my good friend Kathy and I decided to keep this little blessing here, Miss Kennedy, and God has redeemed me and has just blessed me so much since. I've learned that all my decisions have consequences, and i learned that it's best to trust God um, because He's blessed me incredibly. I appreciate Annette sharing her story uh, because it's such a powerful story of a decision uh, to trust God. She was broken. She was hopeless. She didn't see how God was going to redeem. But now two years later, she has seen God's power work in her life and he is blessing her incredibly. And, and, and as nervous as she was making that video, she wanted you to know that if you'll trust God, his plans are better. But that trust is shown in our obedience when we decide to do what God wants us to do. You see, deciding to alter your plan to obey God opens the door to redemption. Just as Joseph's decision to obey God opened the door to God's eternal plan of redemption, in your life, if you will choose to obey God, <laughs> he's calling now. Yeah, I always hate that, especially when it's your phone. The, uh, so the, uh, we always put it out of the way, too, so it, it doesn't bother anyone. Um, when we decide to obey God, we open that door to God working in our lives like we never imagined. And, and, and it comes down to that point of asking the question, is your life opening the door to redemption right now? Or is your life closing the door to redemption because of your decisions about obedience? You see, our decisions have consequences. And right now, some of you are sitting here and you're not even sure why you came to church today because you feel like your life is broken. You feel like your life is hopeless. You feel like your life's a failure. Uh, and, and yet God wants to redeem your life and he's inviting you to choose to obey. And that obedience may look uh, like this. It may mean repenting from something that you're doing and saying, I'm going to put that aside. I'm going to stop engaging in that activity. I'm going to get help. I'm going to go to celebrate recovery. I'm going to do whatever so that, God, I, I'm obedient to you. There's some of you who are sitting here, and, and your life morally is, is, is pretty good, and you're feeling pretty good about yourself, but God is speaking to you, and he's been speaking to you about what he wants you to do how he wants you to serve, how he wants you to give, who he wants you to forgive, uh, you know, what kind of relationships you need to reconcile. And, and, and God is speaking in ways that I never could, and he's nudging your heart saying, you know what I want you to do. And, and you've been putting it off. You've been resisting. And today, God is saying, you're going to decide to obey me and open that door to redemption in your life, to my blessings. And there's some of you who are sitting here, and, and, and honestly, today, you're not a follower of Jesus Christ. You've been hanging out with Christians. You've been coming to church. You like the community. You feel you like the good stuff that we do, but you've never committed your life to following Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. You've thought about it, but you've never taken that step. And today, we want to invite you to decide to trust Jesus Christ with your life. You see, all of our decisions have consequences. Today, you need to decide, what does God want you to do? And then, you've got to decide, are you going to do it? Is the door to redemption open or closed in your life? Let's pray. Father, thank you for loving us, for including us in your family, for being the God who saves and today, Lord, you know our hearts, every one of us in this room. You know the ones that need to take that step of faith and trust you as Savior. And Lord, you know the ones who, who need to let go of habits that are killing them. You know the ones that need to step into serving or doing. Uh, and you've been speaking into their hearts. So right now, Father, we ask these things, that we would hear your voice. That we would hear it clearly and plainly, even as Joseph did. 
And you would give us the faith and the courage to obey. This is what we ask in the name of the one who gave his life for us, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Invite you to stand and worship our God.